Okay, good evening everyone. Um, and I think we have everyone on the call. Hi Poonam. Okay, so let's begin our new topic. Okay, that's where we stopped, okay, yeah, last time. <clears throat> okay, so today we'll talk about the user stories. And uh, I think I'm listening, I'm hearing some echo. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in one of the session I told you, right, there are three different ways you can capture the requirements. Which is the first way or the first method we learned? We studied like up till, up until now we have covered two different ways of um, capturing the requirements. Yeah, Mr. The first, right? Yeah, the first method we covered was the FRDs, right? The functional requirements, the system shell statements. You re you re recollect like uh, the system shall do this. The system shall allow the user to do something. Yes, yes. That's the first. Non-functional. Yes, functional, non-functional, and basically in a statement style you know there was nothing where we were basically writing as a use case format we were just writing down the statements the system shall do do this uh, one second Okay, uh, Deepthi is trying to join. Uh, she's unable to hear me, so let's give her a minute. You guys are able to hear me, right? Yes, Chetan. Yes, Chetan. Yes. Yeah, Chetan. Chetan, I also just joined. So, uh, is this your very first slide? And good evening, yeah. Yeah. What was that, Poonam? Uh, Chetan, I, I just joined, so oh. I was just asking, this is your very first slide or you have said oh. something before this? No, no, that's a first slide. Okay, okay, thanks. Sure. So we'll just give a minute, uh, she's joining Deepthi. She was there, but I couldn't see a mic, uh, like a microphone, so probably she has to dial in again. So just give her a minute. Uh. Chitan. Yes, Darshan. I, yeah, I seen that uh, sprint video one more time. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, in, uh, means uh, what I find, what I found over there is means if we have a requirement, and yes. if there will be, there will be uh, somebody is adding more requirement on that, mm -hmm. and then we have to buy for, uh, means we have to decide which one is the topmost priority and which one is the lowest priority, right? Uh, yes, that will be done by the product owner, not the BA will not decide that. It is based on the hi, 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 Dipti. So yeah, based on the product owner's priorities, that's how you will, you know, do the uh, uh, sprint. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, one more thing, like what is this uh, independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, estimable, small and testable? Invest. Yeah, I will talk to uh, on that just after this slide. Yeah, there's a basically it's an acronym, which is basically how you should write a user story. Okay. 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 I'll talk on that. Yeah. 
Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Okay, sure. So going back to the the slide, you know, we'll start from the scratch again. So basically, in one of the session, I told you right, there are three different ways we can capture the requirements. We learned two ways, right? If you are following a waterfall, you will basically be writing the system statements. Generally, that's one of the first way or first method. The the way the requirements were done way back in 80s and early 90s. The system shall do this. The system shall allow the user to uh, log in, right? The system shall statements. Then we also covered the use cases. Who can tell me what is a use case? Specifications given by uh, the clients or the customers. Mm, specifications given by the client or customers. Uh, that's a very broad definition. Uh, it's Say use case. Okay. Somebody was saying something. Poonam, you were saying? Yeah. Okay. It is a group. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it is a group of activities or uh, a list of activities uh, which will be uh, uh, catered towards a goal uh, that can be either triggered by a uh, by an actor mm -hmm. or uh, or an external um, system uh, okay. to achieve the objective. Okay, kind of close, but not exactly what I want to hear. So, what about Salia? You want to take a shot? So um, is use case, um, it's described as a system behavior as to response to like whatever the uh, our customer or the actor asks us to do from the system. Mm -hmm. So however we want the system to behave. Okay, yes. Yeah, that's pretty much, you know, what you should be saying when somebody asks you about a use case. A use case is nothing but a series of interaction that happens between an actor and the system. So... That's pretty much what a use case is all about, right? So an actor will do something, the system will respond to it. For example, you will enter your ID and password and say, okay, I want to log in. The system will do something, right? You don't need to worry about how it's doing. You need to worry about what it is doing. So here it is authenticating whether you are the right uh, user or not. Did you enter the right password or and, and ID or not? It, if, if it is right, then it will tell you, okay, you know, it will give you access to your email account or bank account or whatever account it is. If it's incorrect, it will stop you right then and there. It will tell you, you know, incorrect ID or password. We all have seen that so many times. So that interaction between an actor, in this case, the customer who's trying to log in and the system, that e interaction you need to capture in the use case and that happens in a series of events it's not just one step it may be 10 steps involved in it and the use case will have a basic workflow it, it will have an alternate workflow and an exception workflow correct so you can see the difference between the system shell statements and the use case so now we will take a look at the third way of doing the requirements which is mainly used in, in any Agile framework, which is called a user story. So a user story is nothing but, it's a very short statements or a very you know brief uh, way of writing the requirements. They are written from the user point of view. That's why they are called a user story. So it's a short and simple English statements written from the user's point of view. What exactly they are trying to achieve. So that's what it is. User story is a short and simple description of a feature told from the perspective of a user who is using the system. Okay. Now, initially, to give you some background, the user stories were initially written in, in a, again, in an agile environment, which is basically XP. 
uh, it's no, known as XP is extreme programming. It's a way of agile. It's a flavor of agile. So they started writing the user stories in uh, XP, but now many of the agile uh, uh, methodologies, they use user stories to write the requirements because they are very simple, uh, simple requirements, easy to write, anybody can write, and uh, they are written in a very different way. It's not a huge documentation you write. You write it in a very you know, concise and precise manner, and it takes you know, very less time to write the requirements as compared to FRDs or use cases. Now, this is the most important piece here the format in which you have to write a use case or oh, sorry a user story so there are three different pieces in a user story right that's basically the structure of a story so the first one is as a user right as a somebody as a customer as a manager as a bank manager as an inventory clerk as a student, as a professor, whatever that role is, who is trying to use the system, that's the name you will write here. Because the first part of the of this user story is a user. That means who is using the system, that person's name will be put here. Right, so that is the first part you need to understand. Whosoever is using the system, that person's role name will be inserted here. The second piece is, I want to do some action, right? I want to take some action on the system. Right? It can be goal, action, desire, function, people call it by different names, but think about that. You are trying to use the system so that means you are doing some activity via the system. So that action will go in this second piece of the story. Right? And the last one is the business benefit or the value you are getting <coughs> from that particular action. So why do you take the action on the system? Obviously, you are getting some value out of it, some benefit. That's what you will put in the third and last section of a story. The business benefit or the value you, the user is getting out of that story. So let's take an example here. So let's suppose I'm trying to log in. So you are a customer of a bank, or rather I'm a customer of a bank, and I'm trying to get into my bank account. Right. So as a, what name should I put here? Customer. Customer or bank customer, right, just to make it more yeah. clear. So as a bank customer or as, as a customer, I want to. Log in. Login using my ID and password. If you can make it more elaborate, that's okay. So that, what is the benefit you are getting out of it? Access the account. Access my account. Access the account. Exactly. So, so that I can get access to my account. So, as a customer or as a bank customer, I want to log in using my credentials so that I can get access to my bank account. That's pretty much what you do as part of a story. There is one more piece to it. You need to write an acceptance criteria in order to say when is that story complete or when can we say that the story is done. That's also we have to write. I'll show you what it is. But this is a basically the basic building block of any story. Three pieces of it. As a user, second thing, I want to take an action on the system. And the third one is so that I can benefit out of it. I can get some business value or benefit out of it.
Any questions on this very important concept? Are we good? Yeah, I Okay. Yes. So, you know, just to give you some more information on this, uh, initially, when uh, the these kind of, you know, uh, requirements or user stories were very new, right? You know, people just started to write and not many people knew about these. They were written on an index card. You know an index card? Yes, Chetan. So these are like a small. Uh, Chetan, what is index? What what is the what is it again? Can you explain that? See, index card is like uh, you know I forgot the exact dimension, but I think uh, three by five inch. Three by five. Yeah, three yes. by five, right? Yeah. So these are like three by five inch uh, index uh, cards, you know, physical cards, small pieces of paper, which basically. Uh, are used in generally you know universities and you want to create your cheat sheets and all that you know that's what we used to use when I was doing an MBA you know we, we were allowed to create some cheat sheets right uh, write some formulas on it and those kind of things and bring it in the exam and I think you know many of you guys might be using for the same reason right Sally you have studied here right so you might have used yeah, yeah. At work and at um, you know when you're when do, you're doing presentations, mm -hmm. you just want like some kind of cheat one what, uh, like pointers, like yeah. small card you can hold in your hand, you know something small, but not like a paper. But paper is like mm -hmm. it can tear easy, but index card don't really tear that easy because they're a little thick paper. Yeah. But the dimensions are small. See, these are the index cards, right? Yeah. So these are small pieces of paper as Zalia said and they are pretty sturdy you know you can basically write on them and you can store them and they are in the standard size 3 by 5 inch so generally you know in the initial days people used to write these stories on an index card with a marker mm -hmm. especially with a marker so that they cannot fill in a lot of things in it they wanted to keep it at a very high level so they started writing these stories using these cards and also using the markers, thick markers. So on the front side of it, on the front side of this index card, they would write basically, you know, the as a customer, I want to do this so that the benefit. So I'll show you here. Uh, Right, so I'm just picking some examples. I don't even know what this is. So you can see this. As a project manager, I want to know if a story is, what is that, is running over so that I can see if there is anything I can do to help. You know, it's not a best example, but that's how people used to write. I just want to give you an idea, you know, how things were before. And on the back side of it, people used to write the acceptance criteria. That means, how can anybody tell that this story is complete? On the back side, we would write that. So front side would contain these, these things. And on the back side, if you flip the story on the back side of it, I mean the card, you will see the acceptance criteria, which will tell the uh, developer that when can they say that this story is successfully done or coded. So in this example, the same login example, in the back side you will write an acceptance criteria which would be similar to, you know, verify that once the ID and password is entered and the, and the customer submits a request, the system authenticates successfully and gives access to the account. 
or the second scenario will be verify that if the ID and password is incorrect the system will display the following message please enter the incorrect please enter um, your correct ID and password something of that sort so you need to tell the audience what are the different ways your story can can end and so that they they can basically develop it based on that and we'll give some more examples so don't worry if you are not clear but at least even if you are not clear with the acceptance criteria are you clear with this part because acceptance criteria will be will will be talking um, in the next slides so the focus right now is to make sure that you understand the format in which you need to write a story and that's exactly the same format you will use clear any questions okay so the next piece is um, what we call the three C's card conversation uh, conversation and confirmation so this guy Ron Jeffries he's uh, basically one of the you know very highly respected um, person in the in the especially in the agile environment and he came up with this term which is called three C's card conversation and confirmation so what it means is the basic philosophy of writing a story should be based on these three elements that it should be based on a like a card right just put enough that it can you can fit it on the card nothing more nothing less so let's do it here right as I said three by five inch index card in the good old days we used to write on a physical card but these days you know people use good tools because we have good very you know set of uh, sophisticated tools which people use to create to write the stories so I don't see anybody writing it on a physical index cards but you know might be there might be people who are writing it these days many people most of us use some tools we use Jira in our project there's another tool called rally which is also a very popular tool and there are a bunch of tools if you just research you, you might find like 50 plus tools which are based on the agile environment so the first C is card that means it has to be written on a card if you are using a tool <clears throat> the idea is that you just put enough that can be uh, or that can be entered on a card you, sh you should not write long sentences which will span three four cards so one story one card right neither it should be too less so it should be, be just enough which can be entered in that index card okay yeah sorry my boys were here so I had to mute myself okay you, you cannot hear them once they are both of them are here they are like crazy okay um, and the second thing was you know um, generally in the old days they used to write using a thick marker again the idea was to use bold alphabets and you know in a bold way you write those things so that you keep you don't add details to the story 
The second C is conversation. The most important piece, and many people don't get this, even in the projects people work, they don't understand this, that user story in itself is not an end in itself. It is not the final requirements. It is just that you know you are writing it so that you can discuss it with the product owner and you can do whatever analysis you want to do. Like you can use your business process model, you can use your use case diagrams, activity diagrams or state chart or context diagrams, whatever you want to use to further analyze that particular story. I've also seen people writing short use cases based on that uh, story. So anything which makes the requirements clear, you should do that. And that's the beauty of Agile. It doesn't tell you to just focus on FRDs or just focus on use case. It tells you, okay, from this point onwards, once you have the story ready, right? You, once you write a story, you talk it out with your product owner and in whatever way you want to document them, you can document. Even if you don't document, it's okay. If you have a documentation practice, you start documenting. So that's why user story is not an end product. It is a means to begin conversation between the product owner and the team. Think about that. It is just a reminder that there is a requirement which needs to be satisfied and that has to be discussed further. Nathan, I found a nice example for this user story on an index card. Okay. You want me to email it to you so you can display it on your end? You can share it. I will give you the control. Yeah, you should be able to share it now. You guys seeing it? Yeah. Mm hmm Yes. All right. Yeah. As a student, I want to purchase a parking pass so that I can drive to school. Mm -hmm. And then on the back side, you have the acceptance criteria. So when can you say that this story is done? That's what you need to write. Yep. And we'll do some examples so that way, you know, you get some uh, hands-on experience on that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, I think... Okay, and the last piece is the confirmation. That's exactly what I was talking about. You need to write an acceptance criteria, which will basically tell the team that when this story is complete, when can we say it is complete? So, right, so these three C's form a good story, or basically these are the building blocks of writing a good user story. Card, conversation, and confirmation. Right, so I think we had the same example right now. So as a customer, that's your role or a user. I want to authenticate my credentials. Right? You can write, you know, I want to enter my login ID and password. That's fine. As long as you are saying that what action you are taking on the system or what function you are invoking so that I can get access to my account. That's the value you are getting out of that action, right? The, some sort of benefit you are getting. That's what you will write in the front side of the card. Now, again, if you are using a tool, there is no front and back side, but still these are valid. You need to write this and then you have to write an acceptance criteria to tell when can we say that this story is complete. So something on the same lines with what we do, 
we, we took the same example before, right, in a use case. So I'm just using the same one so that you can relate it back to it. So your acceptance criteria will look like something like this, right? So once customer enters ID and password, ensure that he she is granted full access to the account. Right? So if you if you enter your ID and password correct uh, correctly, there is no other way, you know, that you should you should be stopped from getting access to your account. There is no other reason, right? So you should be able to get to your account. The second thing is, the second scenario is, if I entered my ID or password incorrect, the system should display an account, uh, I mean, display a message. So when somebody is coding it, they know that, you know, what are the different ways the system will behave. Once you enter an ID and password, and if it is correct, there is no error message. We give them, uh, give them access to the account. If it's incorrect, either of these, then the, the developer knows that, okay, we need to show this message on the screen. Your incorrect ID or password, please re-enter your ID and password. This is your whatever attempt before, you, uh, before your account will be locked temporarily. Right, and then we have to again say that what happens when they do the same thing again and again four consecutive times. So if they attempt or if they try to log in using their incorrect ID or password for four consecutive times, then as per the requirements, we need to lock their account. So we are saying that verify that the customer is allowed to enter maximum of four unsuccessful attempts after which the account will be locked and then the last one is we have to tell them that you know um, they cannot access it from any of the devices either from the desktop or mobile or any tablet it has to be locked from all these different channels so this will be used by the team especially by the developers and the testers to write the code and test the code right so that's your front side and that's a back side so on this uh, acceptance criteria, we don't go to the uh, uh, extent of telling what is the alternative solution that he can do if his account gets locked up, right? You can put that. I mean, if that's the case, but you don't put it in a, like a sequence of actions, like how we did in a use case. I remember you had this uh, also... Uh, if I remember right, you had a 1-800 number that uh, could be used for calling. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah. we don't go to that extent. This is just the uh, uh, what happens if uh, the ID and password are entered incorrectly. No, you can you can do that. You can of course you can say that you know. Uh, let's suppose I can say here. Display the following message once the. Because of the shortage of space, maybe that's why I didn't do it. But here you okay. can Okay, uh, I thought uh, wanted to keep it uh, as brief as possible, so that's why I, I thought you excluded that. No, that's that's the right thing. I mean, you don't want to keep writing a lot of details here, but here in that, the example you took, right, that uh, we need to display a message, that is a valid point you made. We can add it here because it is adding a value to the story. The, so that the developer, when they are writing the code, they know that once the account is locked, we need to do something. We need to show the message on the screen. So your account Right, something on the, these lines, I can do it. 
I'll make it I'll fix it later but yeah you can add it and the main thing is the communication that happens between the the product owner and the BA so not as you as you said that is also right you don't capture all the fine details in a story some things have to be talked or discussed unlike the use case where everything has to be captured in that document or a fun FRD where every statement or the system shell statements have to be entered in the FRD here things are different here we say that okay let's talk it out we don't depend on just doc documentation because in agile documentation is done in a very conservative way you just keep a lightweight documentation you keep don't keep writing documents is that clear yeah okay now what is an epic anybody here heard about this term epic yeah I, I, I heard it when I was listening to the print video mm -hmm. means so what? epic means they are they are by uh, change means there is a big requirement they are diversifying their requirement into the two category that's what it is oh sorry Deepthi yeah, Chetan, I was about, I was calling regarding this. I was mm. unmuted. I was muted. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Darshan, yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead. You're right, Darshan, sorry. Yeah. No, Deepthi, you had something? Yes, Chetan, uh, like you said that documentation would be minimum in Agile. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, uh, even uh, uh, do we have anything uh, anything else to do with the project chatter BRDs like or it's the same for uh, for any environment no in in agile you don't write a BRDs and FRDs you basically stick to writing okay. the stories that's pretty much what you do uh, user story is uh, is a substitute for FRD but uh -huh. uh, is it uh, is it also a substitute for BRD Chetan? Yeah, like, B, there I is. Read somewhere uh, that like user stories in agile environment mm -hmm. is a substitute for FRD. See, BRD and oh. FRD, right? Okay, these are terms which basically people uh, use it in a very uh, different way. BRD, what is BRD? Business requirements document. Right. That means technically in theory it should not have any reference to the system yes that's pretty much BRD means right FRD is functional requirements document that means whatever requirements you have captured in the BRD is now translated into the system level requirements which are captured in FRD FRD is also known by a different name which is called SRS system requirement specification it's the same name I mean same yes. stuff but they are called by different names so when you are talking about agile the whole idea is to cut the documentation to the least minimum extent to the to the least possible extent you don't want to write the BRDs because okay. you are defeating the idea of the entire agile uh, environment by creating an upfront big document of BRD yes the, the basic philosophy of Agile is to sit down with the product owner and start hashing out the stories, put them in the backlog, prioritize them, estimate them, and start working on them. As and when you start getting more information, you will add some more stories in the backlog. So what all documentation is needed uh, when we are working in this uh, Scrum environment? See, there is basically what you do is from the BA point of view your basic requirements or basic documentation will be your epics and stories that's basically pretty much what you do in addition to that as I said whatever it takes to communicate the requirements to the team if your team says okay no we want to see it in a use case way you have to write a use case 
if they say no we don't want to see a use case we are good with uh, you know you can draw some business process models and show it to us you can do that as well or it can be an activity diagrams too you know instead of writing a use case you can show it in a, in a in a form of activity diagram and that can also be enough for a team to understand what needs to be done so there is no specific right or wrong answer there you know unlike in a use case you have to write a, you have to use a template and the template must contain all the different sections right we went through all the sections in a template do you recollect that you guys yes so yes unlike unlike okay, that so, uh, i mean i yeah unlike that in agile you don't have any prescribed way of doing things that's where people get confused you know how do i do my requirements but that's exactly what agile is telling you that you know we don't put any uh, you know uh, we don't force any sort of template or any documentation on the team user stories should be the basis of doing any requirements now how you further elaborate your requirements it's up to you so in many teams i've seen like they don't do any documentation based on the stories and the communication they have between the team members they build the system in some environments or in in the project i am working right now we do lightweight process modeling to show you know how things will work but apart from that we don't write frds or we don't do brds or we don't do use cases Then my question is like in one of the interviews uh, when I was uh, being interviewed, mm -hmm. the, the interviewer said that uh, they uh, they were following use case um, they were following use cases uh, for writing uh, their requirements, and what she said in that interview was they uh, the business analysts they don't interact with the clients. Mm -hmm. It is just the set of use cases which are already there. And mm -hmm. from there, they have to uh, like bring down all the documentation and, uh, and everything. Okay. And I couldn't understand at that point of time, like what documentation, what else more do we need in uh, this kind of environment when the user stories are already in place. Use cases, you mean? And uh, yeah, the use uh, sorry, use cases are already in place. So okay. I didn't get what uh, what exactly she was asking. Okay. So that's the reason I'm. Okay, no. In that case, see, in real world, people don't follow the right way, right? They will mix and match and things, and they will do as per their own convenience. So, in that case, what I'm thinking is, what they wanted was, based on the use cases, you need to write the stories, the user stories from the use cases. I've seen that a lot of times. That they will give you some documentation because maybe they don't have time to talk to the team. They will write some use cases and give it to the team. So from that point onwards, you need to write, or you need to extract the user stories from the use cases. Okay. And that's not the best way to do it, but yeah, I've seen that happening. Okay. But uh, will the use case specifications uh, will will that not serve the purpose of? Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, use cases in itself. I mean, uh, can mm -hmm. yes, uh, can the technical developers or, or I mean the technical people? Yeah. Uh, can they develop based on use cases? Exactly, they can, but uh, like, you know. Is there a necessary for user stories? Then the, it is not. That's what you know. You don't need to again duplicate things. And again, write the user stories from the use case. It doesn't make any sense because the whole purpose of writing the use case is to document the interaction between the actor and the system, so that the team can write that code based on that. Okay. But maybe they are not following the best practice. So instead of that, you should have asked them. You know, what is the purpose of writing the stories when you already have a use case? Because ideally, yeah, yeah. you should not I do that. Know. Yeah, I I couldn't make out what documents she was uh, uh, talking about and uh, mm -hmm. like what else uh, I couldn't think at that point of time. What else documents do we need when we have users? Yeah, use cases? yeah, but you are thinking on the right lines. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So, okay, Epic. So I think Darshan, you answered this, right? Ep an Epic. Anyone else? Yes, but I don't know whether it is correct or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lengthy user story. Yeah. That's correct. So ep Epic is nothing but a large, huge user story. Now, what is a large basically? It's a relative term, right? Large for some people can be, you know, it can be easy. Some for some it can be small. So it's a relative term here, right? Large. Correct. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes. With the group. Sorry. Puram. <laughs> no, I guess that should be speaking. So I, I just. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Okay. No, you asked what what uh, is large. What do, what do we mean here by large? So basically, yeah. what our uh, second uh, thing is after uh, you know the the way it is written. This uh, we can say that uh, the action that is performed encompasses a lot of things. So. Uh, like manage online, the one that the, the uh, thing that we are seeing on the screen, manage online current account has so many things that are happening. Yes. So it automatically becomes a large user, user story because That's the actions performed are too many. Exactly. <clears throat> so whenever you come across <clears throat> a user story which is large enough, that means it's an epic. Yeah. So yes, an, epic, yes. an epic is nothing but a huge user story which can be broken down into small user stories. Right? Generally, you know, there is a gray area here in in the agile um, environment. Some people say that a large means any story which cannot be done in the that particular iteration. That's a large story. Some people say that any story which cannot be completed by one single developer in three days, two to three days, is an epic. Frankly speaking, there is no right or wrong answer. It it all boils down to you know um, your own judgment call and uh, many other factors like you know how good is your team? Can they do it in like? Uh, one story if you know let's suppose you have all team members very new in the in the you know project so for the same the same story which can be done in three days will take six days for a new person so here basically there is a you know a lot of confusion not only amongst uh, newbies but also amongst uh, experts i've seen a lot of you know articles and a lot of papers which basically dispute you know what is the definition of large or epic but don't go get into that because you know the experts themselves are not clear right now so chetan i was actually um reading something on it and the way they explained um was that you take the smallest user story mm -hmm. and you move that your relative point yes and then you compare it to that so yeah. whatever your smallest user user uh, user story is, mm -hmm. um, the large and your epic would be compared to that. Right, and that we'll talk about that. You know how to do an estimation. We'll talk um, most likely tomorrow. But yeah, that's uh, that's one way you can say you know which one is large and which one is small. But again, even in that, people have a dispute. You know, I'll give an example. Let's suppose. Um, I tell you to, you know, like we pick two people, right? And we say that, okay, you need to cover or you need to run two miles. Okay. So we have a fixed um, length or a fixed, uh, what you call um, uh, the distance, right? So two miles, both have to run. And we give them, you know, okay, whatever time it takes for you, but you need to run two miles. So let's assume both 
these people, I mean, both these guys, they start at the same time running. One is athlete and one is not. So the same distance for the athlete, it is nothing to run a two-mile thing, right? For him or her, it may be a piece of cake to run two miles. But the same two miles will be a lot of struggle for the person who is not that fit. So you see like what I'm trying to say is it's a relative term here. The same distance <clears throat> which can be covered by this athlete in like you know maybe 15 minutes might take like one hour by this guy. So if I give a story to one person that will basically change the dynamics if I'm giving it to a person who is very experienced or very you know smart and skilled and we'll talk about those things tomorrow because uh, you know I want you to think from this like when you're fresh but estimation is one topic where you know people get into all those kind of issues because it's all relative there is no fixed definition there So going back to the epic, are we clear with what an epic is? It's nothing but a large story. A large is nothing but when you, it, again, it's a judgment call. If you think, you know, you, have, you can break it down further, that's how I do it in my project. If I think that I can break it down into small pieces, that's a epic. Now, I don't want to break it down into like, you know, a field level that means I can I should be able to enter um, my ID can be one story password can be one story that's too granular you don't want to break it down to that level so let me take an example here um, which is pretty much people can relate it to so let's take this one um, okay so let's suppose you want to book your flight right you are planning to travel and you want to book a flight so here as per this you need to make a selection so book book my flight tickets is an epic correct do you agree with that because right I can yes, think yes, a lot of things will be involved in it yes right so by default I will I can make it an epic so first thing is I need to pick my select your local website maybe that can be one story picking your region so that you know you can get the customized options you can see everything in dollars if you are in US if you are in some other country in Middle East you will see in that currency if you are in India, you will see, or Pakistan, you will see the local currency. So those kind of things, it will help the customer to, you know, get a local or a personal experience. So I'll say I'm in US. So do you think this can qualify for one story? Selecting my yes. website. So the scope yes. of yeah the scope of that story will only be limited to selecting my region. It won't be doing anything else. Okay. So now let's take a look at it. How can we further you know write stories? The goal is to book a flight tickets, which is an epic. So we already did one, which is selecting the uh, region or the country. Now let's take a second step. What will you do next? If you are planning to buy a ticket. First destination. Yeah. You will, right, you will put from, you will put to, you will select the dates, departing and returning dates and enter all these things and then search. So what is the goal here? To get the result means to see the flights right to see the flights so 
searching can be another story where I'm saying that the scope of that story will only be limited to entering the data here and clicking the search I'm not concerned about seeing the results right now I'm just saying that okay let me enter these from and to values the dates departing and returning the, the child and all those things so that I can search for my flights that can be a second story so let me put this I'll just put something here and say okay just put some random dates and I'll say search so the third story can be display the results can be a third story now once you did the search you entered your uh, you know uh, criteria and now you click the button okay search so now you are seeing okay these are the options or these are the different flights I, I have so now the third story can be display the flights man that's 385 you're getting wow man I booked for 1600 hmm. okay so that's pretty much how you can keep breaking it down into further stories showing 353 dollar yeah 385 Washington to Mumbai? no 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 total is 863 okay while going it's 385 while it's coming it's 478 not bad oh yeah that's that's very cheap yeah but the dates are pretty much you know like January onwards. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Then, then, then it's fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. In this month, you won't get it. Forget it. I did the simultaneously and it's showing me like 1,700 or something. Yeah, that's because you are planning in this month, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm not planning, but just checking. <laughs> okay. So the idea is to, you know, I was trying to show you how you can break it down into small stories. If it's a big story, you need to break it down into small components. That's pretty much what you do with your epic. So here, in, here I'm saying manage online current account. So you can authenticate customer, you can check the balance, transfer funds, make the payments. You can do the sorting, right? You want to sort your transactions based on uh, the dates or based on different types of transactions all those things you can do it you can view your monthly statements you can set alerts so each one will be its own story so that each one can be um, you know developed and added to the system independently they don't have to depend on each other so maybe in the first iteration I can just authenticate you know it won't have anything else but I can just enter my ID and password because there is nothing else I didn't develop all these so I cannot do anything so as we go further in the sprint or iterations you will keep adding the new features as and when you complete the stories are you guys clear yes sir. okay so this is what you are saying right invest yes sir. so this is basically an acronym which is uh, what it calls you know it's an invest is nothing but independent negotiable it should be valuable to the customers you should be able to estimate it it should be small and it should be able to you should be able to test it that's what it is and that's how the invest acronym was formed 
So the first one is independent. That's exactly what we I told you here, right? Each one is independent of each other. So it doesn't mean that in the first or second iteration you have your system complete. But whatever you have implemented should be able to work exactly as it would work in real environment. So that's what makes it uh, makes it independent. So don't create dependencies between stories because if there is a dependency, you cannot basically plan it, plan your iteration like that. It should be in, written in such a way that you know you should the customer or the product owner should be able to prioritize them, and we should be able to plan it. Right. So that's why they have to be kept independent of each other. A negotiable is something which you know, which means that as a customer or a product owner, when the product owner says that you know I want, let's suppose they say that I want these six stories to be done in iteration one. But maybe your team capacity is not that much. When they are doing the planning meeting, right? Make sure you understand these things. The estimation, how much time it will take to do the story, will be done in sprint planning meeting. Right? In the sprint planning meeting, the team will basically take a look at the story and they will say, okay, this is what the estimate is, and that is done in a story points. We will talk tomorrow. But there is some sort of estimation done to understand the complexity of the work. So if your product owner is saying that okay, I want six stories to be done in iteration one, and if your team thinks that it's too much work for them, it has to be negotiated. You can say that you know out of six, we can do three or four. The remaining two can be done in iteration two or sprint two. So. You can negotiate with your product owner and come to a common ground, basically. Okay. The third one is a valuable. This st your story should be valuable to your product owner, and it should not be written from a developer's point of view, because the ultimate Goal of writing a user story is to support your product owner in meeting the needs and requirements what they are expecting from the system. So a user story must add value to the cust to your product uh, product owner, or a, you know it can be from the of course they are from the business. So you never should write a story. Which looks like this. As a developer, I want to validate database servers so that I can ensure that all connections to the database are active. If you give this story to your customer or your product owner, for him or her, this doesn't make any sense to them, right? Do you think it will make sense to them who does who don't understand, you know, anything like database and servers and connections and web services? If you give the story to your product owner, no way. they won't understand this. As a developer, I want to update the database table. This when a new record is inserted, so that the data can be retrieved. I mean, for the, for the product owner, they really don't care what's in the database. All they care is, is my system showing the name of that person, or the name of that book, or whatever it is. So never write a story from a developer's point of view. Always write a story from a user point of view. That's exactly why it's called a user story. Now this we'll take a look tomorrow. Estimation, <clears throat> but everybody has to tell how much work is involved in implementing that story. 
and here the good thing is it's a lot of guesswork involved so there is no you know real math or hard code like formula which will basically give you the answer it's all about your gut feelings think about that that's why you know it's a rough estimate it's not a hard number which basically you can be uh, you know uh, accounted for or you know you can take a responsibility for so let's suppose you say you know I'm, I'm thinking it will take me 10 story point or 8 story points but in reality if it takes you know more than that or less than that you're not going to be you know pinged on because it's all estimates guesswork there are different techniques you can do to estimate a story the most important piece is like you know story points which we will talk tomorrow but many people use different ways of doing it you know some they use planning poker I think many most of you might have played or at least know that game poker so they use the poker cards to you know, do the estimation um, some teams also do based on the t-shirt size so they will pick they will pick one story and say that okay tell me the estimate or tell me the complexity of this uh, user story so is it XXL that means too much work is it Excel that means it's a lot of work large means you know work which is basically uh, which can span one week right and they will have some definitions around those what XXL XXL XL large medium small means so that they can estimate that right so for XXL they may say that okay anything which will take us three weeks will be XXL XL will be two weeks large will be one week medium will be three days small will be maybe two days or one day so based on that they will do an estimation the whole idea of estimating is estimating the story is to make sure that you only commit that much work which you can handle in the sprint you don't want to overcome it or you don't want to undercome it it's, it's showing in the video t-shirts uh, and how they are doing a statement uh, with the use of t-shirt mm -hmm. method Okay. Because yeah, a couple of couple in that developer and everybody, uh, uh, everybody is in a spring meeting, a spring meeting, right? Huh? Planning meeting. Uh, yeah, in the planning meeting, right? Yeah. And then, like, uh, if they are, it is, uh, the, it was all about the grade, how to, uh, how to build the system, uh, mm -hmm. and like, uh, if it is a update the uh, update the grade then one person is uh, showing me small one person showing small one is showing medium and uh, another one is also showing small and they are deciding that why you choose the small size another person why you choose the medium size and they are doing the estimation that way mm -hmm. yes okay. and that's exactly you know like let's suppose there are two developers or two people on the team one is maybe just to join one week back yes. correct and the other one joined like uh, or the other one is like six years this guy is for in the same project for six years so there you basically you want to compare Apple to Apple right if you tell them okay how much effort it will take how much time it will take the experienced guy may say okay I can do it in uh, 16 hours whereas the new guy will say I can do it in 40 hours correct but that should not yes. be the basis of estimating the basis of estimating estimation should be how much really that work is how much work or how much complex that particular story is so that's why you want to take out the hours from the calculation and say okay give me the size or complexity of it
So there will be some definitions around what XXL mean, what XL is, L, large, medium, small is. And based on that, the team will basically vote. We will stick to story points because that is you know easy to understand. Is estimation uh, done in the backlog refinement uh, meeting, right? No. Estimation is no. done. No, estimation is done in your sprint planning meeting. Sprint planning meeting, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why did we jump to the backlog refinement? Okay, no problem. Okay, the next thing is it should be small. That's exactly what we said, you know, that um, a user story should not be too large or it should not be too small. So you you cannot create a user story to say that I want to book tickets. That's one story because as we just now saw that it has got a lot of things in it. Correct. Second thing is it should not be too small that it, you cannot say that adding one field is one story. Right. Adding from and to destination cannot be one story. It is too finite. So you need to pick your sweet spot and say this is what the small is. The reason is if you have a too large, if it's a big story, it is difficult to estimate. People cannot estimate. If I tell you to estimate, um, you know, the entire system, that's difficult. But if I tell you to estimate, okay, how much time it will take to write uh, uh, this or to create one form on the screen, it's much easy. Correct? If I tell you that, okay, estimate how much time it will take to build this website as compared to, I say that, okay, can you tell me how much time it will take to build this form which has got eight fields in it? So that is the second option is much clear because I know with the scope of the work. I can plan it. I can estimate it. If it's too small, you are basically adding more cost to it than you are getting the benefit out of it. You see what I'm saying? If I say that each story, I will say this is my story, right? Where we are just allowing them to enter from and to. Then we will have another story where they will select the dates. Third story where they will pick the number of people traveling. So you are not creating any value to the use to your product owner by just delivering one story like this. What will I do just by entering the date and I mean the departure and the this city from and to cities? It's not giving me any value, right? Just by selecting the dates from and to dates, I don't really know what where it's fitting. I mean, where where does it fit in this entire scheme of things? So you need to make a judgment call and say which one or which level you need to pick. It should not be too large. It cannot be too small. And last thing is it should be testable. That means you need to have a good acceptance criteria which will capture the same thing, you know, basic workflow, alternate workflow, exception workflows, but now you are capturing it in a form of a user story. If you don't have the acceptance criteria, your user story is incomplete. So make sure you add not only the, the basic components as a customer, I want to take an action, ben uh, the benefit out of it, but also your acceptance criteria. That's very important. Any questions?
Hello? No question, Jason. Uh, this print planning uh, is all about how many user points we can do in that particular print, right, Jason? Yeah, that is a topic we need to discuss in detail. Velocity, that is called the velocity of the team. Have you heard of this term? Yes. So, velocity is the capacity of your team to handle the number of uh, story points you can do. And yeah, we'll talk tomorrow on that because tomorrow I need to cover the, the sprint planning and uh, the burn down and burn up charts. Okay. And uh, one more thing, Chetan, uh, uh, can we have a discussion about uh, domain-specific uh, business analysis, like uh, how would uh, a functional, uh, uh, I mean, a, uh, finance do uh, uh, BA from finance domain be working on, like, uh, uh, or a healthcare uh, uh, BA? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. just in case, uh, can we have a discussion? Okay, yep, we can do that. Yeah, That's we can do that. I, mm -hmm. okay. And apart from the Q&A, do we need uh, to stress anything else uh, for the interviews? Uh, no, the document is basically, you know, it's a living document. That means I'm updating it um, with more questions as and when I, you know, get some more um, inputs. But that should be enough. That's a very exhaustive document. You know, it covers almost all yeah. facets of your interview. Okay. So if you go, I have not seen anybody doing that, but if you go through each of those questions, they, there is basically, you know, there is most likely you have um, all the questions under earth which can be in your interview. Yeah, I mean there are uh, there are also leading questions like uh, where we obviously Google uh, go and Google uh, them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is basically your you know user stories, and uh, we'll okay before anybody I stop here. Any questions you guys have? Tomorrow we'll take a look at the Jira. So, what I want you guys to do is, tomorrow evening, before we meet, make sure you create a, an account in Jira and, um, you know, uh, so that you can follow along with me. It's a very, I will, I will send a, it's a small user guide I've created. You can just follow the steps and create your account in Jira. Right, because we'll use this tool to create stories and you know do a lot of things here. Okay. Okay, any questions? No questions? Okay, so uh, before we close tonight's session, I just, um, you know, final uh, check. If you guys are okay, we can close. Otherwise, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, Chetan. Yeah. Uh, uh, when we get the feedback on the resume, is oh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. I will do it um, uh, tomorrow. I will g uh, give you the you know feedback for sure. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, but uh, before that, I am sending you the one another uh, version. Uh, just okay. check it that uh, okay. and delete the uh, last one. So I don't, 
uh, review the previous one um, i should no, be no i will i will send it tomorrow morning or right now okay okay and good yeah and second thing is i just want to ask you is that like uh, my uh, uh, like uh, domain is going into the telecommunication according to my experience mm -hmm. means uh, because couple of, uh, i work for the ericsson mm -hmm. for two years when half year okay. i am showing that one and the at&t as well means it will affect my uh, uh, job scenario basically we have to put some re uh, projects from telecom then because yeah, I, yeah I, I put yes i put the telecom uh, projects over there okay but uh, like if i want to go to this uh, means uh, anyone can give my resume to the banking industries then i i am qualifying for that or not no no i didn't get your question so you are saying yes. okay uh, okay go ahead my resume is more uh, more focusing on telecommunication functions okay. right that's means true I, it show, it's showing me that i am working in the i i have a very good experience as a BA in telecommunication industries, mm -hmm. but when you send when you send my resume, I means Aspartic is going to send my resume to the different different industries. Okay. There will be a telecommunications or banking industries or financial industries. Mm -hmm. I am qualifying qualifying for that as well. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. So it's not that if you don't. I mean, we are not showing all the projects in telecom, right? There might be one or two. Yeah, two only two project. Yeah. Yeah, the remaining ones might be in finance and um, other domains. Yes. Yeah, finance domain. Yeah. yeah. So that's okay. I mean, that doesn't mean that you will not get any jobs in non-telecom domains. Just okay. that you know, be, see people who are interested in uh, let's suppose telecom, definitely will reach out to you. Let's suppose okay. I'm into finance, but your last two projects were in telecom. Telecom. But that, yes. Yeah, that doesn't mean that I may not reach out okay. to you. Yeah. I, okay. yeah. So you will still be okay. you know yes yes that's true and uh, what about the uh, like if i have constraint like i want to do mark mar means uh, i want to stay in texas mm -hmm. then there will be a uh, i am getting job late uh, that's the, that will happen that will happen or means it may be a, if you have a constraint like you know you're looking for a specific region in a specific domain yes. then of course mm -hmm. you know it may take a while as compared to somebody who is willing to just relocate anywhere, for them it's oh, okay. much easy. Yes, yes, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're miss willing to wait a bit, you know, that's okay. You know, you can pick your own uh, place because many people are living in certain area. They don't want to move, and that's totally, you know, understandable. Yes, yes. Because uh, this, this is going to be my first project. Then I, I, I'm just removing, removing the constraint. That's mm -hmm. why. Well, just thinking that if I'm targeting the Texas, means it will take a longer time, means one month, two months, or three months. Yeah. See, I would advise if you are, you know, really short of time and you want the job as soon as possible, just yes, take the yes, first yes. whatever first comes in, just take that and okay. then look for uh, opening in your area. It's much easier okay. to get once you are in the market. Yes, it's yes, easy. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Means once we are in the market, if I get the job, I got placed. Then uh, meanwhile, I'm also getting the call from another vendor as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. And one more last thing. Last thing before we are going to end. Uh, Miss, uh, oh, uh, means uh, as I, I I read I read something in the Harvard Business Review that uh, the data analysis is also uh, means BA people uh, are also working as a data analysis that's true yeah but see recently data uh, analyst job uh, needs like you know more specific skills because yes. of the, you know big data and all that coming in yes 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 it needs a lot of you know statistical tools and uh, yeah, yeah, much yeah. more uh, you know different set of expertise you need there you don't you do BPM and use cases and all that. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, I, I just seen online there will be a three tool like Tabula, ClickView. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very popular for the data analysis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, data analyst job is more like you know modeling st uh, statistics and uh, yes, yes, all those kind chi square of test and lots of statistical model and forecasting. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah, because uh, because that's the right now is booming, right? Big data and data. Big analysis. data, yes. Big data is picking up. Yeah, yeah. 
because I read in the Harvard Business Review magazine that the, now the company is directly implementing the big data uh, department in their in their companies. Mm -hmm. Means there will be a project management team, there will be HR team. Now they have a, a, a data analysis team. They, it will directly report to the president of, or CEO of the company. Okay, okay. Means I uh, yeah. yeah. Means that's why it's like it's booming and there will be a good opportunity as well. <laughs> Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 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 Any? Yeah. Sure. Any other questions? So, if not, we'll meet again tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern time, and um, I will send you a couple of things. Uh, one thing is I will send you a small user guide on Jira, so that you can create your account. Don't do it in the morning. Uh, do it in the evening, so that you get. Like I think they are very conservative. Like they give you six days uh, of free access to Jira. But the <clears throat> good thing is you can create another account using a new email ID. So there's a workaround. So you can keep getting new accounts using your new email ID. So you don't have to literally pay for it. But the only thing is every six days it will expire and then you have to again create a new email account. So you can keep playing with the tool. Okay. Okay. Okay then. I think uh, thanks everyone, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good then, uh, good night. Are we touching base tonight or uh, yeah. later? Yeah. Yeah. I will call you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye bye.